Let's go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my apologies, our morning session went later than we expected. Uh, due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment Virtual Public Hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing can watch it on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or by telephone. Committee members are participating by video. Registered participants will connect by audio only. Participants are automatically muted on entry. You will be unmuted by staff when you are called on to speak on your item. For all those who are waiting online, please ensure that you have called in with the phone number that you were originally registered with. If you call in with a different number, you will not be able to speak on the item. To ensure audio clarity, I suggest that you do not use the speakerphone function on your telephones. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 is amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. My name is Alan Smithies and I will chair today's meeting. Joining us on the panel today are Nadini Sankar Peralta, Asif Khan and Paul Kidd. City staff are also present. Simon Lamb, Chris Pereira, Alex Chu, Sam Mozignani and Emily Greco. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to property permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone attending today who wants to receive a copy of the committee's decision must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, it may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. The hearing procedure is as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak on that item. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, is given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you are reaching the five minute limit. When addressing the committee, please state clearly your name and address. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters described in the application. The applicant or agent proceeds first and will make their presentation to the committee. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. To ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes, the committee may decide to defer the application if it is substantially revised. Then, individuals either in support or opposed to the application are invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have finished their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the previous speakers. This marks the end of discussion on the item. The application is then taken into committee for a decision. Are there any committee members here uh, this afternoon who have a conflict of interest they'd like to declare? Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. We'll start with the first session on our agenda. It's item number 22, 109 Lawrence Crescent. I have two people registered to speak, and the agent is 
Ely Karam or Lisa Matar. Are you there? Ellie Karam or Lisa Matar, are you there? Mr. Chair, the agent for this file is Juan Martinez. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. He's I'm just not... having some issues connecting, so if we can move on to item number okay. 23, I'll work with Juan Thank on you, getting Mr. connected. Thank you, Mr. We'll go to item number 23, I'm sorry. Item number 23, 27 Hollyhock Court. I have two people registered to speak. I'm sorry, one person registered to speak. Anthony Bartolini, are you there? I am, yes. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, sir. My name is Anthony Bartolini from Square Design Group, and I'm representing my clients from 27 Hollyhock. Okay, thank you, sir. I'm just uh, looking at your file here. I note that there are no uh, staff comments or conditions uh, registered uh, in accordance with your application. I note that you have... Uh, one variance here for a rear yard setback. It's pretty clear what you're asking for, sir. Is there is there anything that you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon? Well, thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak. I just had one, uh, one point that I wanted to clarify. I was speaking to Denise uh, McMullen uh, from the planning department. Uh, she's an assistant planner. She gave me a call on uh, on the uh, the 6th of June. And, uh, and noted that she didn't realize that in her preliminary review that the deck seems to exceed uh, or let's say extend over the limits of an easement on the property. And um, she mentioned that if, uh, if need be, or you know, based on her recommendations, uh, and this is exa exactly what she stated in an email, uh, and she mentioned if, if I was able to bring it up to the committee, and she said the construction of the proposed deck will be limited to be behind the line of the easement as shown on site plan drawing A1. And uh, I would just like to get your thoughts on uh, on that point that she made there. Um, it's not noted in the staff report because she mentioned that uh, when she did, I guess, look at the drawings again, it was too late to kind of resubmit uh, a new uh, report on her end. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, just be clear, our file doesn't have any staff comments contained in here from, from any staff division. So um, just going by what you tell us. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Kidd? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I, I'm not clear on, on uh, how the uh, applicant intends to deal with the fact that the uh, uh, part of the deck is on the easement. Uh, Oh, and so just as a note there, I was hoping maybe we could just put um, put a condition on the application uh, in front of us today and uh, I guess make a mention of the fact that, uh, you know, uh, it's not uh, permitted to um, build over the easement. So we will have to kind of, uh, you know, when we submit for building permit, I'll have to revise the site plan and, and submit uh, according to uh, what is approvable. Okay. So, sir, sir, um, can I but again, I would like to get your thoughts on that. Sorry. Can I add, just to follow up on Mr. Kidd's uh, question, what, do you, it's not clear on the survey, what is that easement for? So I was told from, um, what was her name again here, uh, Denise McC McCullen, that she looked into it and uh, it was related to a very old easement, uh, some maybe a CN rail or Trans Canada of some sort. I believe she did mention it was for CN rail, but she wasn't able to really get too much information and said... Uh, that we would need to dig deeper if we wanted further info on that. So have have you got so have you gotten clearance to put the deck over the easement? We have not. No, we have not. Um, so on that premise, um, I was hoping maybe we just put a condition on uh, the variance uh, to say you know uh, according to what's approved today, uh, you know we have no approval to build over the easement, but. Um, Hopefully, we can at least get the um, the projection uh, off the back of the house approved at uh, the four point two six seven. That way, if they decide they want to uh, uh, alter the shape of the deck um, from a rectangle per se to uh, maybe an odd shape, then they'll still be able to exceed uh, the three point five projection to four point two six in uh, whatever area on the deck that would apply to. 
Okay, well, you, you, you understand the risk then associated with going forward if you're, you're still showing the, uh, the deck encroaching into the easement. So you understand that. Risk, uh, from, from my perspective, I'm just going to edit my site plan so then uh, we're not encroaching on the easement because we don't have clearance to be able to build on that easement anyways. Mr. Um, Mr. So I was just hoping we can get that. Pardon me. Mr. Lamb. Sorry, I was just going to suggest if it's helpful and agreeable to the panel members, and I'll leave this up to you, that you add a condition. I think this is what the applicant was getting at, uh, stating something like the proposed deck no part of the proposed deck uh, shall encroach on the existing easement lands. So maybe you can consider that. Okay. If, I, that's, if that is the intention of what the agent has been mentioning. Okay. Uh, so... Yes. Yeah. If I could ask, Mr. Ab, does, does, that, does that affect his variance, though? Okay, that's the risk. Okay. Uh, we've heard from Mr. Lamb that we can put a condition in that the, uh, the deck shall not encroach in, into the existing easement. Uh, so that would make sure that there's no legal problems for the owner at some point in the future. So uh, there's, does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? If I could get a motion on this application, please. Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Therefore, um, upon hearing this, I, I'll put forward a motion um, to approve this application. Um, I do believe that it's uh, keeping in keeping with um, the official plan. And there is just that one caveat about the encroachment, and I will add something to that. So I'll motion to approve this application. I'll make it subject to the June 2nd um, uh, report where the east side yard setback needs develop substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing and that um, an additional caveat that no part of the proposed deck uh, shall encroach on existing existing easement uh, lands. Uh, Ms. Ms. Sankar, there, there's no staff report here. We don't have a staff report. It was just the... Oh. Maybe I've put it in the wrong. Okay, I, I, I thought I was looking at the right one that I had pulled out here. If there's no other staff report, then I shall just look at that, that one caveat of no part of the proposed deck shall encroach ex on existing in, um, easement lands. Okay, that's that's correct. Thank you. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. Sir, uh, that motion carries, sir. Your application has been approved uh, without condition, uh, with, with a condition that you can't encroach into the easement lands at the rear of your property. Okay. Thank, thank you me. very much. Just to clarify, we're still, uh, we are sir, still. Sir, uh, we, we've, we've already ma sir, we've already made a decision. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. We're on, uh, we'll go back to item number 22. I'm looking for. This is 109 Lawrence Crescent. I'm looking for Juan Martinez. Are you there? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and fellow committee members. Yes, thank you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Absolutely. My name is Juan Martinez. I'm a planner at Design Plan Services located at 900 the East Mall. Okay, thank you, sir. I just going through your file, I note that there was a report from city planning dated the 2nd of June they have no objections to your application. It's subject to a condition. Uh, I just wanted to ask, it's pretty clear what you're asking for in the uh, application we have before us. I just wanted to ask, sir, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon? Um, through you, sir, Chair, oh, I uh, just want I'm, to... I'm so, uh, clear sorry, sir, my mistake. I note that we have... One other person here registered to speak, so I would suggest that you give the committee a uh, brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Absolutely. Um, 
Sir Chair. So I would like to just begin my presentation by acknowledging the two sets of plans and zoning notices that we submitted for this application. Uh, the revision, the original application was solely due to discussions with urban forestry regarding the potential injury of a mature tree in the rear yard uh, due to the proposed retaining wall. Through these discussions, uh, the location of the retaining wall was moved away from the, from the trees and closer to the house uh, to the satisfaction of urban forestry. And in that process as well, we removed the variance um, relating to rear yard soft landscaping. Uh, uh, now, through you, Sir Chair, uh, uh, we did have conversations with planning staff, and as noted in their staff report, they do not have any concerns with this application and the associated variances. Uh, further, the owner of the property has practically taken the time to discuss and explain the essence of the variances with his neighbors, which is the reason why the next door neighbor at 111 Lawrence Crescent has withdrawn his objection to the proposal. Now, in regards to the variances associated to the proposed new two-story dwelling, the proposed FSI is 0 0.989 times the lot area, whereas the bylaw permits a maximum FSI of 0 0.35. The variance is due in large part to the drastic change in grading of the subject property. The grading on the eastern side of the lot is approximately 2.3 meters lower than the western side. That the resulting established grade is therefore approximately 1.3 meters below the finished grade on the western side. And consequently, the floor of the basement is closer to established grade than the floor of the main level and, is, and thus the basement is considered the first floor. Um, now, if you exclude the GFA of the basement, uh, which was included in the FSI calculation, the dwelling will have an FSI of 0 0.62 times the lot area, or approximately 315 square meters. The intent and purpose of the FSI regulation, in part, is to regulate the size and massing of the dwellings. Considering that the proposed dwelling complies with essentially all building setbacks, all height requirements, length, depth, and coverage, the massing of the dwelling proposed is not an overdevelopment of the site, as the massing of the dwelling is located out, is in a location already contemplated by the bylaw. Additionally, we found several approvals within with similar FSIs within the neighborhood, with an average FSI approval of 0 0.6 times the lot areas. Thus, I am of the opinion that the proposed FSI and massing of the house is in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. Now, in regards to the height and width of the pedestrian entrance variances, the height of the entrance is necessitated by the constrained topography of the subject property. It will only be 0 0.62 meters above the finished grade on the western side. The width of the main pedestrian entrance uh, is only for the lower platform, which is which will have only three risers. Uh, and considering the grading changes at the front, they will be practically imperceptible. Now, uh, variances four through seven and 10 and 11 are technical variances as the front porches and the rear veranda are being considered as second story platforms. Uh, if they were considered as platforms on the first story, however, the size and encroachments would be permitted as of right. Uh, lastly, in regards to the side yard setback variance along the east side, this variance is only for a one-story bump out along a small portion of the dwelling, while the remaining dwelling along the east side has a compliant setback of 1.55 meters and is compliant on the other side as well. Uh, the proposed setback does allow for enough, main, uh, enough space for access, maintenance, and drainage. It would have little to impact on the adjacent property. Uh, and in this in this regard, we have read the staff report and have no problem satisfying the condition recommended by planning staff. So based on uh, this provided justification, I am of the opinion that the resultant dwelling fits in well with both the existing and the planned context of the neighborhood and is consistent with the redevelopment trends along Lawrence Crescent. And for these reasons, uh, I believe this application represents good planning and it meets the four tests uh, under section 45.1 of the Planning Act. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have Lutz Fullgraf. Are you there? Hello? 
Yes, Mr. Fullgraf. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, my name is Lutz Fullgraf. I'm speaking for the Lawrence Park Ratepayers Association. The address is 3219 Young Street, Box 239, Toronto, Ontario, M4N3S1. Thank you, sir. If you could give us your thoughts on this application. Yeah, uh, let me start with, I have no information about the withdrawal of any uh, letter of objections at this point. Um, and I know from a neighbor that has been contacted just two or three days ago for the first time by uh, the applicant to discuss the proposal. Um, so I'm not really quite sure how, how that stands and how we deal with it. But um, the subject lot uh, is certainly a challenging lot uh, because of the grading and because of the size of the lot. It's only 501 square meters uh, where the uh, standard lot in, uh, in Lawrence Park is 675 square meters. This one is uh, so certainly smaller than uh, the standard lot. Um, but I will have to say that uh, even in light of these difficult conditions, it does not seem that the applicants have made a serious attempt to plan for a building with modest impact on the neighborhood. Uh, the application provides, uh, um, the application form provides an indication for little respect for the bylaws um, and maybe even the whole process. Um, I, I'll just give you two examples. It says, why is it not possible to comply? The answer of the applicant was design of the dwelling does not meet all the regulations. There's no reason or explanation why it cannot be compliant. Um, the date of the acquisition on the application form was stated as unknown. I simply looked at TREP and I found the last sale was January 18, 2016. So again, I don't think there's been made, there's been a good effort made by the applicants to explain uh, the situation. Uh, Lawrence Park Ratepayers Association's greatest concern is the record FSI for Lawrence Park here for of 0.89 variance 3. Um, I disagree with the staff report in that respect because uh, it allows an FSI way too high for this small lot. Even if the difficult grading did not exist, the city estimates an FSI of 0.62 without the lower level. However, even though the plans call it basement, the living space created next to the at-level garage are only partially below ground and should not be completely discounted from the FSI. And even at an FSI of 0.62, the FSI remains very high. The living space next to the above ground garage should not be completely discounted, as I said. If this building would sit on a regular 675 square, foot, square meter lot uh, in Lawrence Park, with an at-level garage, it would still represent an FSI of 0.62, which is not a minor variance from the 0.35 that uh, the bylaws permit. Um, the committee declined an FSI of 0.58 on a lot of 698 square meters at 48 Rochester just on May 10, and that is just 400 meters away. For another comparison, um, about 200 meters to the south on a very small lot of only 372.5 square meters. Um, uh, that's at 1356 Mount Pleasant. Uh, a similar, with similar challenging grading, 0.63 was allowed as an FSI by, by TLAB uh, or after discussion at TLAB, and that's a far cry from the 0.89 FSI applicants are planning for. In short, the difficult grading should not be used as an excuse to build a house that would be too large, even if the grading did not exist on this small lot and if the small lot were flat. Um, other variants include a very high entry door at 1.96 meters above grade. Um, but actually, if you look at it from the front elevation, the, the door is 3.08 meters above the ground level of the garage. And that will be very visibly from, visible from the street, and it will basically change the appearance for uh, the houses in the neighborhood uh, and, and very visibly differ from them. Um, 
There are other variances, and I've commented them on my letter of uh, objection, but I don't want to uh, use up too much time in closing. I would like to quote from the letter that I think is still valid, or at least I have no other uh, information from Robert Mills, who cannot speak here today. And he said, this will be a huge house which will overwhelm its neighbors in our case, will extend down the small backyard of 109 Lawrence Crescent and destroy enjoyment of our back garden and those of other immediate neighbors. The plans are too large, the proposal is not desirable or appropriate, and the variance should consequently not be regarded as minor. LPRA asks for the plans to be denied. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, I'll go back to the uh, agent. Mr. Martinez, are you there? Yes, sir. You've heard the comments from Mr. Fulgraf. If you'd like to respond to them, please. Absolutely. Uh, through you, sir, Chair. Um, I would like to first begin by stating that um, the neighbor at 111 Lawrence Crescent submitted a letter to um, the committee and is available in the AIC stating that he does not have any further objections after he understands the essence of the variances. Um, regarding the, the comments um, about the GFA of the basement, if I can ask staff to pull up the west or the, if I can ask staff to pull up the north elevation of the plants. So as you can see in the plants, um, the grading drastically changes, but if you go one more to the west elevation, you will be able to uh, go down one more to the west, yeah. You will be able to see that in, on this elevation, the garage is full low grade. Um, if I can ask to go down one more to the rear elevation, which is the south elevation, as well, you can see as well here that the basement is actually below grade. Um, lastly, if you go to the very last elevation, which is the next one, you'll see that the grading drops at the front of House. So I will respectfully disagree that the basement um, should uh, should be included in the GFA calculation. I mean, typically uh, the, the basement is not included in the FSI calculation, and the committee of adjustment is in place to review this type of applications uh, because of the constraint law. Any type of development would require an FSI variance um, for uh, prop for this property. Uh, also, in regards to the livable space, the, the main or the basement, the main level floor, uh, it functions as the basement, and the main level livable space areas are um, in the main level, which is considered the second. Um, now, in regards to the variances that um, were brought up uh, to the committee at uh, Rochester and Mount Pleasant, uh, I would like to know that I reviewed we reviewed these variances while we were designing the the, the house and essentially at, at Rochester there was actually uh, a height inside our setback variances so it was not solely a an FSI variance that the committee took into consideration um, um, as well as in Mount Pleasant um, it was noted that um, th that this property had a similar grading change uh, when in fact it it, does, it did not. I also reviewed that decision and the grading on Mount Pleasant changed 0 0.6 meters while in this application the grade changes 2.3 meters. Uh, so again this variance, uh, this um, comparable it does not fully um, exp uh, has the same constraints as the lot in this application. Um, so, uh, and again, we, we if you exclude the, the, the GFA of the basement, um, the, the resulting FSI is in fact within the approvals of the neighborhood. And in fact, there are uh, three or four approvals that are higher uh, than the GFA above uh, the, the grade, uh, above the, um, above the, the basement. Um, and these examples can be seen at uh, a, a 75 Lauren Crescent was approved at 6.13. Um, uh, 115 Lawrence Crescent approved at uh, 0 0.63 um, and so forth. The average approval of the entire neighborhood um, it's 0 0.6, which is what is being uh, 
proposed in this application. So um, through that, through you, Sucha, I hope that uh, I've answered those the questions that were brought up against uh, the committee. Okay, thank you, sir. Just uh, to be clear, uh, remember that the committee is, does not deal with precedents. We just we deal with each application on its own merits. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. My question is related to variance number three, FSI. Even if we exclude your basement and the percentage of FSI becomes 0 0.64, which is roughly 64% more than allowable of 0 0.35, how do you explain that I should be comfortable accepting your variance number three? Through, through you, sir, Cherry, if I may answer. What's that, sir? Through you, sir, Cherry, I was, I was waiting for you to give me the right to, to answer. Okay, is, Mr. Khan, can you, uh, can you phrase that in terms of a question rather than a comment? Mr. Chair, the applicant's just asking if he can respond. Okay. Uh, who, who's respond? If the applicant can respond. <laughs> okay. Sir, if you'd like to respond to uh, Mr. Khan's comments about the floor space index. So, through you, sir, Chair, per the site stats, if you are to exclude and only include um, the main and the second floor you would have an FSI of 0 0.2 um, sorry 0 0.62 um, of FSI and the reason why we say that this is a um, an appropriate um, FSI is because the dwelling does not have or does not create any other type of variances regarding um, building setbacks building heights coverage length um, depth Therefore, the massing of the dwelling, as proposed, um, is in a location that is already contemplated by the bylaw. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, your point zero point sixty two is still very high than maximum allowable of zero point three five. Mr. Khan, Too high. Mr. Khan, do you have a question? I think he's already. Yeah, answered. this is what I'm saying. This is this is my question. That is very variance on very variance number three is very high. I think he just answered that, Mr. Khan. Okay, sir. Thank you. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker, Ms. Sankar? Yes. Um, so just to get some more clarification about number three um, uh, and around the FSI, even at 6.62, you, I heard you say uh, that it is characteristic of the neighborhood. And if you could just talk a little bit more about that character, because that sort of weighs into my decision as well. And then additionally, um, with respect to the side yard setback, I believe it is the, um, you know, east side yard setback um, that is at 0.94, that is variance number eight, when it should be 1.5 meters. I wanted to also see if you can provide a commentary on, on there for me, because those were the two variances that I had had an issue with. Absolutely. User chair, uh, to the first question, um, again, the, the intent of the FSI regulation in part is to, call, is to regulate the size and massing of the dwelling to maintain a consistent uh, size, uh, sizes and masses of dwellings of the properties. Um, like I um, answered to Mr. Khan, the dwelling essentially uh, complies mainly with all building setbacks, essentially, uh, and all the height variances, uh, all the height regulations, excuse me, um, it, it complies with length, depth, uh, and specifically, it, it complies with coverage. Um, so all the other regulations that um, essentially also regulate massing are compliant with. Um, now, now, I understand, Sir Chair, uh, he mentioned that 
the committee does not work with precedents. However, um, in order for us to uh, understand what the development trends of the neighborhood is, we have to review of past community of adjustment decisions. And within a 500 meter radius of the subject property, there were about um, 100 and 180 decisions. Uh, and the overall average approval was of 0 0.6 um, uh, of FSI. So if you were to consider that number uh, of 180 decisions within a 500 meter radius, um, you you would see that the development trend of this neighborhood is of newer houses that typically request a higher FSI number um, than what is permitted by the bylaw. Um, additionally, the house, as as well as the 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 other speaker mentioned, this lot does have a smaller lot area. Uh, therefore, any development uh, would bring up the, the, um, the FSI number slightly larger. Um, and uh, to answer the, the last question that you had regarding the site yard setback, uh, this is for, um, is only for a small bump out of the house, um, which is along the um, east side yard is only a one-story bump up and you can see it on the main elevation if i can ask staff to bring it forward uh the first uh elevation you can see it on the left side of the drawing that is the small uh, on the very left side that's the small bump out section of um that created the variances however the 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 rest of the dwelling along that side it's a 1.55 meters and on the other side as well is compliant so um, that variance is solely for a very small portion of the dwelling and it's only a one-story uh, bump out um, and um, so if if you look at the developments within the neighborhoods uh the design of the house as well from a facade perspective it's it's characteristics of of new developments in the area as well Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please, Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. I feel very persuaded by the explanations provided by the uh, agent here today. And for those reasons, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application. And I'm going to make it subject to the June 2nd staff report in that the east side yard setback be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing. That's my motion. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved subject to uh, city planning conditions. Thank you very much. Have a good uh, afternoon. Now on item number 24, 347 Cleveland Street, I have one person registered to speak, that's Joseph Battaglia. Are you there, sir? Uh, yes. Yes, hold hello, on, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Can you hear please? me? My name is uh, Joe Battaglia. 1050 McNichol Avenue, Scarborough, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, just going through your application, sir, I note that there is a um, couple of reports from staff on file with your proposal. The one from Transportation yeah. Services dated the 2nd of June. Uh, they had no objections to, to your front yard parking uh, subject to conditions. Uh, there's also a report from City Planning dated the 2nd of June, which uh, recommends refusing variance number three regarding the building height and variance number four regarding the side exterior main wall heights. So I just wanted to ask her if you've had the opportunity to review those reports. I've talked to my client. He wants to maintain those variances. I tried to uh, convince him to... Uh to try to cut them down, but uh, uh, he's adamant about wanting it like that because that's this is his house and he wants the extra height. And, uh, okay, well, that 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 being the case, sir, you may, the want, uh, you may you may want to give uh, a presentation to the committee as to why um, we we should 
approve the variances contrary to what's been recommended by planning. Well, uh, the the height uh, uh, maximum height uh, uh, is nine nine meters. Uh, section uh, that's variance number eight, and uh, he's he's only asking for point uh, six two, which is only two feet higher uh, than uh, what is uh, uh, permitted. Um, we think that that is a minor. Uh, Variance, and uh, uh, we think that uh, it should be considered as a minor variance. Uh, the uh, height of walls is uh, is a a, a situation where um, he he wants to have he wants to have a a, a modern looking house, which um, in which case uh, the the uh, walls have to be uh, straight up, whereas if it, if it was a sloped roof, um, uh, he wouldn't have the, the width on the top floor that he requires for the spaces that he needs uh, on this particular property. So he uh, would like the committee to approve that aspect of the height of the wall. Uh, that's all I have to say. I, okay, thank you, that, sir. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Ms. Sankar? Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so uh, it, just to, to address planning's uh, concerns, which I haven't heard you say this really clearly, except that you think it's minor. Um, but, you know, regulating the height of a dwelling is really to help mitigate the massing impacts that can result from additional height and to maintain sort of like a relatively, um, you know, consistent scale of, of development within a neighborhood. And, you know, I'm not really hearing you uh, talk about this, how, how it could impact on the, the, you know, the consistency of the, the scope of that neighborhood. And maybe if you're able to talk about that, it might help convince me uh, about what to do with the staff report. You know, we don't always have to pay attention to the staff report, but in this case, um, it is staff has given very good reason as to why they've they've asked for those uh, two variances to be refused. Um, in my opinion, uh, a difference of two feet in terms of height is not going to be that uh, noticeable in, in terms of the, the uniformity of the uh, uh, of the streetscape um, you know if you're, if you're asking for for more like five or six feet then, then yes definitely but uh, if you're walking along the street it's very hard to notice the two feet uh, if, if uh, uh, you're walking along the sidewalk I, w I would uh, find it very difficult to believe that uh, that would be that much noticeable. Uh, that it would cause any um, uh, negative impact on the streetscape. Are you saying it would be aligned with other neighborhood dwellings? Um, if the uh, neighbor, if the adjacent houses had uh, sloped roofs, they would be higher than this flat roof. If they had sloped roofs, because the sloped roofs are permitted to be higher uh, because they're measured to the midpoint of the slope. So I, I failed to see that that two feet would make that much of a difference of an impact on the street scale. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the, uh, Mr. Khan, you have a question? Yes, sir, I do. Uh, my question is related to variance number five and seven, which has been a concern of transportation services as well. Now, your front parking is not allowed. You have to be on the budding street and number, your Parking length is short, which is required 5.6, but you are 5.01. Now, in that case, you are supposed to have front yard parking permit. Now, how do you address this uh, uh, deficiency? The parking um, uh, will be, uh, if, if the car is, is a big, long car, obviously, it will encroach 
into the boulevard portion, but it will still be inside the driveway of the uh, of the house because the boulevard is, in many cases, uh, five meters or more from the property line to the curb of the road. So there's plenty of space for a car up there. Oh, uh, and there's no, um, and, and uh, the sidewalk is right at the end of the boulevard, right next to the, uh, right next to the curb, so that you're not encroaching on the sidewalk. So that's why the ministry or the transportation people uh, have no objection to it. Well, you, you want, uh, you understand, sir, that uh, what, what they indicated was you have to go through another process in order to legalize that front yard parking, which is... My client has no, no problem doing that. Okay, but you, you understand there's a risk associated. It doesn't automatically mean you get approved. Well, uh, my, my client thinks uh, it shouldn't be a problem getting it approved. Okay, okay thank you. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I didn't hear anything today uh, that persuaded me that uh, variances number three and four are, in fact, of a minor nature. I'm going to put forward a motion to uh, refuse this application. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Kahn seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Ms. Sankar dissenting. Sir, your application has been refused. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're on item number 25, 37 Regina Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That's Jonathan Benskowski. Mr. Benskowski, are you there? Afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yep. Jonathan Benskowski, 301 Watton Avenue. Great. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask, I've been, I went through your file. I note that there's no uh, staff comments or conditions registered with your uh, proposal. Pretty clear what you're asking for in your application. I just wanted to ask if there's anything you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon. Yeah, I, I would just like to add a couple quick things. The bulk of these variants are, are largely for architectural features, namely for the setbacks into chimney breasts and things like that. Um, what I also would like to add is the calculate, excuse me, the calculation of coverage included a roof projection that came over the front. So the actual dwelling itself is 31.97%, but the examiner calculated it uh, at what is before you today of 33.27, uh, basically due um, to that, that projection of the roof. And I'd be happy to show you where if the committee wish. Uh, if not, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. I do believe that this uh, application is minor in nature and does meet the intents of um, the bylaws. And I so I'll put forward a motion to approve this application as is. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Kahn dissenting, that motion carries. Uh, Mr. Bankowski, your application has been approved without condition. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We're now on item number 26, 181 Glenview Avenue. I have uh, two people registered to speak. The agent is Ty Rook. Are you there, sir? Yes, sir. It's Ty Rook. I'm the, for the owner of the property at 181 Glenview Avenue. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, if I could, um, let me just go through your file here. I note that there is a uh, report from Transportation Services uh, dated the 2nd of June. No objections to your application, provided that you, you maintain that front yard parking license in good standing. That's, that, that's one of their conditions. Uh, that's the only staff comment with your application. 
And if you could give the committee, sir, a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Sure, sir. Um, the application before you today is to construct a, a new two-story dwelling on the property at 181 Glenview Avenue. There's variances related to this uh, side yard setback of the rear deck, uh, side yard setback to the building, and also to a fire shutter on the west side as well, in addition to building length, FSI, and also front uh, for parking. Um, I did provide presentation slides for this application, and if we could just go to that. Um, I'll start with the FSI because that's the first slide on the, uh, the area context. Subject site's been highlighted in red, and the areas that have been colored in green are those properties that exceed the, uh, the, exceed the 0.35 bylaw standards. And in addition to that, there is actually uh, FSIs as high as 0.86 uh, within the area. So from a FSI and from a building and the way manner in which the building has been deployed on the property, it's more than appropriate and more than contextual in terms of what's been approved and what exists in the area and what forms the character of this neighborhood. And if we go to the next slide, um, which shows basically the existing side yard setbacks in the area, this is the side yard setbacks in the area that are less than 0 0.09 of a meter, uh, which is the bylaw requirement. And as you can see, it's completely highlighted in purple there. And this is typically normal within this area, either on both sides of, this, uh, of the properties or on at least on one side. And what you'll note for this pr proposal, if you go to the next slide, on the site plan, I've highlighted the existing dwelling, which is in red. So the bottom of the plan, thank you for rotating, uh, the bottom of the plan would be the street Glenview Avenue. Um, and basically what's been highlighted in red represents the existing dwelling and the proposed dwelling itself is matching that existing west side yard setback, which is the right side of the site plan um, and matching that existing site plan. And you'll also, and what the, there's an additional variance related to a fire uh, window or fire shutter, uh, which is that small highlighted green area on the right side of the site plan. And you'll also note that that area, that green area, matches up with the existing window of the existing dwelling. And majority of the building itself matches the 0.46 that's been proposed along this uh, rear, uh, along this west side or setback. Furthermore, with regards to the parking variance itself, as, you, as the chair noted, there is no concerns from transportation staff. You'll note that we did submit a site plan, uh, an updated site plan, which shows the parking permit of parking that's already existing in the front yard, and that's highlighted in uh, the red, uh, sorry, the green circle at the bottom of the plan, which indicates that there is eagle front pad parking that sh that exists on this on this uh, on this property. And lastly, this there is a variance related to building length and. The portion of the building that exceeds the building length is 0.6 of a meter, and that's been highlighted in green at the top of the site plan. And if you look at if you look at it from a contextual perspective and from an overall perspective, it matches along consistently with 179, which is the immediate house to the east of the property. In addition to that, you know, if you look at through the neighborhood and in, in terms of uh, site, uh, sorry, building lengths that exceeds. Uh, 17 meters, you find those houses at 201, 203, 215, 235, 248, 212 Glenview Avenue, in addition to the immediate street down to the south of the subject site at Glen Grove at 228, 206, 182, 170, 221, 183, 181, and 177 Glen Grove. So there are houses that exceeds the 17 meter uh, building length requirement found throughout this neighborhood. And once again, if you look at the side elevation that's been submitted, um, which is, I believe, the next couple slides down, you'll note that on the side elevation, next slide, if you could go to the next slide, thank you. Um, that area that's been highlighted in green is the extent of what's being ex requested in terms of variance. It's approximately less than just shy of two feet in terms of length. It is a portion of the building that would, from a contextual perspective, from an impact perspective, would be minimal. And given the side yard setback uh, context and the pattern of development within this area, it is a very fairly tightly knit neighborhood. But once again, that 0.6 of a meter that encroaches beyond the 17 meter mark uh, from a planning perspective, both from a staff level and from, from my level, um, does not result Sir, in an inappropriate on the site. 
Sure. That's my submission. If there's any questions and rebuttals that's required, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Kidd? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just taking a look at the, the site plan here. I notice uh, uh, the uh, rear corner of uh, uh, house number, the proposed house at uh, 181, and uh, the rear basement walkout and steps encroach into uh, the um, uh, right of way, your neighbor's right of way. Yes. And I have an, if you look at the site plan, you'll note that uh, there's an arrow pointing to that area. It says line of proposed right of way modification. And what that means is that uh, the right of way was for access to the rear yard or to the garage located at the rear. Uh, and it was for 179, which is the property to the east. 179 has given up their right to that right away, and we do have documentation if the committee de uh, needs to see it, but we do have documentation. Basically, they've relinquished their right to that right away, uh, so therefore, uh, we have rights to build onto that portion of that right away. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have... Janice Brown or Russell Jardine, are you there? Mr. Chair, I don't see either of these uh, speakers on the list. Okay, I'll take them off the list. Thank you very much. Uh, I have Greg and Calla Bandler, are you there? Wife Cal is, I, I happen to be in New York on business, so I appreciate this virtual format. My wife Cal is at home in Toronto. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, it's Greg Bandler. It's 183 Glenview Avenue, Toronto, Ontario, M4R1R4. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Super. Well, thank you for the opportunity to speak today, uh, elaborating on some of the key points from our written submission. Uh, we acknowledge the efforts of our new neighbors at 181 Glenview to be good neighbors. Uh, having lived directly next door at 183 for 33 years now, we've seen many changes and improvements in our area. The majority of our neighbors are longtime residents contributing to a vibrant community. So as it happens, I only mention this because the applicants put it in their documentation. 2012, we asked for a variance to propose two-story addition to our house, current, which is currently 10.8 metres in length for an increased GFA of uh, 0 0.41 versus the allowed 0 0.35. At that time, the allowable maximum building length was 14 meters and it was our intention not to go beyond the bylaw allowances respecting taking into account the single floor additions of our neighbors. Um, the COA did approve our modest variance request. However, we didn't proceed with the addition at that time. We do recognize that the present bylaw amended in 2013 now permits a maximum building length of 17 meters as per bylaw number uh, 569 2013. However, for lots on the south side of Glenview that are typically approximately 170 feet deep, this unto itself is significant. As it is, the impact of the allowable 17 meter building length, as you saw in, in, in Mr. Rook's uh, diagrams, uh, will essentially create an imposing uh, wall over six meters in length between our properties that will dramatically impact how we use our backyard due to lack of airflow, loss of morning light. Uh, the use of our deck in the summertime and loss of winter sunlight in the darkest and coldest time of the year. We are aware that variances over 17 meters have been granted to lots on the north side of Glenview. However, the north side of Glenview has lots that are well over 200 feet deep, um, as is the case for the last property that uh, the architect uh, built at uh, number 208, and they're 30 or 40 feet larger than the south side lots. So we don't consider that to be a reasonable or comparable precedent. Um, the permitted floor space being 0 0.35 times the area of the lot versus the proposed space at 0 0.55 times, translating into a greater than 55% increase to the allowable floor space, coupled with the proposed addition of 17.6 meters is further beyond the current bylaw, which is we believe is too large for south side uh, street lots. Hence, we feel an objection is warranted and rational. It should be noted that, uh, uh, and, and if you saw the diagrams, um, that Mr. Sorry, I'm not sure I've got his name proper. Mr. Rook showed um, he was actually suggesting that 179 um, Glenview was at the same length, and his diagram clearly showed that that was not the case. 
uh, that that green two meter, two foot section or 0 0.6 meter was, was at, uh, extended beyond 179 as well. Um, so, and it should be noted that the COA upheld the 17 meter bylaw decision recently with respect to 189 Glenview, four doors to the west from the applicant on the south side of Glenview. Um, with regard to the uh, requested side yard setbacks, we've shared our concerns with our submission and with the applicants and requested appropriate considerations regarding above and underground water flow as well as airflow. This, of course, includes ensuring ease troughs don't overlap, resulting any potential water damage to our property. Um, so, you know, as Mr. Rook pointed out, we don't oppose the 0.46 meter setback between the houses. However, we would request that the portion of the house that extends beyond our footprint and 183 be set back at the required 0 0.9 meters, which would be less imposing and may save the lilac trees that exist on both sides of our mutual property lines. Um, further noted, the buckthorn tree on our property, which falls at the 17.7 meter point near the proposed addition, while classified as undersized on the applicant's uh, tree arbiter, arborist report, is a natural screen and more importantly, a natural bird habitat for a number of species all year long. This tree has been shaped and preserved by our arborists over the years. Uh, lastly, we support the reinstatement of the LAPS front yard parking permit given street parking is already an issue on Glenview and the applicants own two electric vehicles which require charging. We trust the COA will recommend, as I think your staff report does, upholding a minimum of one legal parking spot as a condition of approval. In summary, uh, then, we don't agree that the precedent set on larger lots on the north side of Glenview apply to smaller south side lots. It's interesting to note that the majority of support letters are from north side residents with larger lots or Rosewell uh, or Glenview Avenue residents who are not in the immediate vicinity of 181 and not directly affected. Uh, in, in closing, we believe the COA should ensure the general intent and purpose of the city's zoning code, bylaws, and uh, official plan are maintained. Thank, Thank you. you Appreciate the time. Thank you. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll uh, go to the next person on the list. I have a Cindy Widrington. Are you there? Mr. Chair, I do not see Cindy on the call. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Next person on the list is Donald Cross. Are you there? Donald Cross, are you there? Yes, I am here. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, my name is Donald Cross. I live at 193 Glenview Avenue in Toronto, M4R1R4. Okay, thank you, sir. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Yes, thank you. My wife, uh, Janice Cross, and I live at 193. We're located five houses to the west of 181 Glenview Avenue. We've owned and lived on this property for more than 46 years, since 1975. We submitted our comments on the application to construct a new dwelling at 181 Glenview Avenue to the committee on June the 1st. Our main concern is that the new dwelling will create an undue impact upon our neighbors, Greg and Calla Bandler, at 183 Glenview Avenue, located immediately to the west of 181 Glenview Avenue. The Bandler House has a building length of approximately 10.8 meters, and the proposed new dwelling at 181 Glenview will have a building length of 17.6 meters. This will result in a 6.8 meter wall along the east side of the Bandler property, creating a heat alcove on the Bandler's patio and blocking the morning sun from the patio and from the back of the Bandler's house. Consideration should be given to creating a wider setback of the new building wall from the Bandler property line to allow space for landscaping, particularly for the section of wall extending beyond the rear of the Bandler house. We understand that the existing bylaw now allows building length of 17 meters. This building length should not be allowed to extend to 17.6 meters in this situation. In addition, the west uh, yeah, uh, side yard setback should be set at the minimum of 0 0.9 meters as per the existing bylaw for the portion of the west wall of the new building extending beyond the rear wall of the Bandler house. A residential building size or mass of a building is generally determined by three factors, the length of the building, the height of the building, and the floor space index. The existing bylaw, which was, was uh, 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 
apparently approved in 2013, sets a, a permitted maximum building length for detached home at 17 meters for lot frontages of 18 meters or less. The, um, the front lot frontage of 181 Glenview Avenue is shown on the site plan at 8.15 meters. This lot frontage is only 45% of the minimum required lot frontage of 18 meters or less used in the bylaw to permit the, the uh, maximum building length of 17 meters. We're talking about a big house on a small lot. The proposed floor space index of 0.55 times the area of the lot is 57% larger than the permitted maximum floor space index of 0 0.35 times the area of the lot. This indicates to us that the proposed residential building size is too large for the lot, thus requiring significant adjustment to the zoning bylaw through the committee of adjustment process. As we said in our written submission, the existing floor space index for several of the immediate adjacent properties should be investigated and made known to the public to determine if the requested variance for maximum floor space of 0 0.35 times the area of the lot to 0 0.55 times the area of the lot is consistent with the range of floor space indexes for nearby properties. And I stress for nearby properties. Thank you for allowing us to submit our comments to the Committee of Adjustment and hearing our presentation on the proposed new dwelling at 181 Glenview Avenue. Thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go back to the agent. Mr. Rook, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'm here. Yeah, you heard the comments from the previous speakers, if you'd like to reply to them. Sure, sir. Um, just I'll start off by talking about there was a, a brief discussion or mention about water drainage. And as the committee is well aware, we can't drain on adjacent properties and that will be dealt through the, during the building permit stage if this application is approved and we have to contain all of our drainage on our property. There was also a mention about two trees uh, just to the uh, rear of the property, a uh, rear of the building. And those two trees that uh, share or, or straddle the, uh, the property line have been submitted with an arborist report. And as identified by the, the neighbor at, one, at 179, basically the applicant at 183, basically those trees are under the size requirements to require any form of uh, permit to injure or to destroy those trees. And our, main, our, our app proposal is to maintain those trees as much as possible. In addition to that, Urban Forestry has been circulated this application and has not provided any comments or conditions with respect to this proposal. With regards to the size of the dwelling, the length of the dwelling, the height of the dwelling, you'll note that the proposed uh, application does not seek any height variances for the proposal. We are under the height requirements for this proposal and we're not seeking to propose a building that exceeds the height limits in any form or shape or size. With the, and for there was an, a mention of the fact that the building lengths uh, that exceed 17 meters were actually for on the north side of Glenview Avenue, but that's not the case. And as I indicated when I went through the addresses, for example, 201, 203, 215, 235 are all on the south side of Glenview Avenue, uh, which, which where the subject site is located. In addition to that, similar size lots that are located on Glen Grove Avenue which is 228, 206, 182, 170, 221, 183, 181, and 171 Glen Grove Avenue, which have similar lengths in terms of a, uh, lot depths, have houses that exceeds the 17 meter mark as well. The order of magnitude in terms of the length variance that is being sought on this property is more than appropriate given the context of this neighborhood, given the fact that there are existing dwellings that exceeds the 17 meter mark, and the manner in which the property has been, the house has been deployed on the property. You'll note that there's no front yard setback variances or rear yard setback variances as a result of the 17.6 meter dwelling. And in terms of what I discussed with, in terms of the building length as it relates to 179, I did not say it was the same. I said it was consistent with. And what you find is, is that from a zoning perspective and from an approval perspective in terms of meeting the test, not all developments are, need to be the same. It needs to be similar to and whether or not if it's compatible. And it's in my submission that this proposal is compatible 
with the immediate context and also with the overall neighborhood. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Although there are no staff recommendation, but after hearing for and against uh, this application, transportation services regarding various number six is to obtain the front yard permit and any landscape change have to be have a prior approval from the permit and enforcement section of transport services division. So I will make this application be approved subject to the transportation note. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Khan, uh, you're, rec you're recommending approval subject to transportation services comments. That's right, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, someone to second Mr. Khan's motion. Ms. Sankar seconds, all those in favor? That motion carries. Sir, your application has been approved subject to transportation services conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're now on item number 27, to Norton Crescent. I have two people registered to speak. The agent is a Matthew Rabau, R-I-B-A-U. Are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, hello, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yep, it's Matthew Rebo at Perspective Views, 126 Catherine Street North, Hamilton, Ontario. Great, thank you, sir. Uh, just going through your file, I note that there are no staff comments or conditions uh, listed with respect to your proposal. Uh, we Correct. have one other person registered to speak, sir, so if you'd like to give us a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Sure. Um, yeah, let me start off by saying... Um, this is a corner lot, so there are a few uh, variances that we're asking for that pertain uh, to that regarding uh, setback. But we also have uh, done our best to, to design this uh, so that we comply with as many zoning requirements as possible. Uh, one thing that I would like to highlight would be the elevation uh, heights. So I do think this is one of the ones that might be most uh, problematic, I suppose. Uh, and this is relative to the established grade calculation. So um, if we go to page, yeah, if we go to page 808, the rear elevation, this gives a, a pretty good indication of, of that slope and how it relates to the, both the side yard uh, calculations as well, uh, or sorry, well, all of the building height calculations. So because of how we're required to calculate the building height in relationship to the established grade, um, it, it, you know, the, the development per, uh, uh, perceives to be a lot taller than, um, than what it actually is. Uh, if we were to factor in the grade at, uh, the actual grade, um, then our our building height would not be so um, substantial in comparison to the other uh, property, neighboring properties. Um, and we do think it meets the four tests. Uh, and I think that's it for now. I'll start with that. Of course, if there's any uh, comments or questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. I just wanted to explain that right off the bat. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have uh, Laura Binchik or Gabriel Binchik, B-I-N-C-I-K. Laura. Thirty Langborn Place. Yes. Hello. Can I get your yep. full name? Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, sir. Uh, it's Gabriel Binchik. I'm at Thirty Langborn Place, Toronto, Ontario, and three B one A nine. Okay. Thank you, sir. If you'd like to give us your uh, thoughts on this application. Yes, um, I, I, I do object to all the variances, but specifically to uh, variances two and four. Uh, two being the building height, 
uh, which is uh, requesting a 1.6 meter increase in height. Um, now, uh, this uh, this height of the building, which is proposed at 153.19 meters, um, exceeds the neighboring street, which is Langbourne Place, which is at an elevation of 141.8. So that would make the building height facing Langbourne Street uh, 11 and a half meters, uh, which which is close to very close to four stories. Um, the trees are, that are uh, on the north side of this property, which are along Langhor Place, would uh, as a result be shaded year round and are at risk of dying. Uh, also, uh, throughout the winter months, uh, our property and neighboring properties uh, would be shaded uh, from the winter sun, uh, which would be uh, uh, make a potential icing hazard on the street as well as uh, reduction in, in the um, heat uh, obtained from the sun during during those winter months. Um, also, too, regarding the lot area, uh, there is an increase in coverage from 25% to 30%. Um, we feel as well that this will result in a significant loss of vegetation, as, as the plan indicates, so the removal of four trees. Um, and um, throughout the neighbourhood, these, these type of developments have shown um, a significant loss of vegetation due to due to these redevelopments, um, and um, as a result, we felt we feel that it would uh, um, increase the the um, heat cl climate within the neighborhood as well as uh, increasing runoff. Um, and we have had flooding events in the past, um, and I also believe that these variances are not in line with the neighboring dwellings, which are uh, all one-story buildings. Uh, this plan of survey for this property indicates that it's a two-story dwelling, but it is in fact a one-story um, building. And uh, in the current um, uh, allowable um, bylaws would, would permit a, a, an adequately larger building uh, to, to replace the existing. Um, the, the the owner recently purchased this property, and I do believe that it's their intention uh, to redevelop and re resale it, as has been done with numerous properties in this area. So I, I don't feel as though they have uh, the best intention for uh, for the neighborhood and neighboring properties, um, as as they have uh, done redevelopments in the past. So um, those are my comments, and and uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to uh, speak. Thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, I'll go back to the agent. Mr. Rabau, are you there? Mr. Rabau, are you there? Yes, I, there we go. Thank yes. you. Um, so you've heard the comments. So yes. You've heard the pre comments from the previous speaker. If you'd like to reply to them. I have. So the first one being height, I already touched on that. Uh, what I can do is elaborate that um, we did try to maximize um, the use of this land and the existing grades regarding the heights and whatnot. Um, uh, I do, I'll leave it at that for now. Of course, you know, neighboring properties, yes, the adjacent ones are single story, but again, you know, as the as time goes on, they're likely to get you know redeveloped and and, and larger dwellings uh, replaced or additions made. Um, uh, again, within the neighborhood context, we do believe that it is appropriate. Um, loss of trees. Uh, we understand that there are a few trees being uh, knocked down to accommodate this development. We do want to maintain as many existing trees as possible, and the owner does intend uh, to plant more trees. On that note. Uh, the last point was to develop and sell. Um, our understanding is that the owner is developing this to live in. And so, again, they, they do intend on landscaping and, uh, again, making this development more appropriate for the neighborhood and, and obviously, you know, beautifying the, the streetscape. Um, negative implications to neighboring properties. It's a low slope roof. Um, we, we are trying to, uh, you know, mitigate um, severe impact to neighboring uh, properties. The, the negative comments from the neighbor across the street uh, um, mentioned that, yes, it might uh, restrict a little bit of sunlight in winter months, 
Again, uh, we believe that this is fairly minor. We did try to consider that when designing uh, the overall mass of the building. And, uh, and I believe I touched on all points that were made. So yes, if anybody has any other comments. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Yes, for you, Mr. Chair, having heard um, from the debutants as well as the agent, you know, I do believe that there was a lot of consideration that went into the development of this um, uh, this proposal, and I I do believe that it meets the intent of the the bylaws, and and as such is also minor with the considerations that was put into it. So I'm going to put forward a motion to approve uh, this application, and um, you know there's no forestry uh, in there, but I've heard them say that they would consider planting a, a lot more trees, and so I'll leave it at that, and that's my motion. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Uh, someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion? Mr. Khan seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries, so your application has been approved uh, without condition. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Have a great day. Thank you. We're now on item number 28, 60 Old Park Road. I have one person registered to speak. That's the agent, Paul Raff. Are you there, Mr. Raff? Sam, can you hear me? Uh, barely. Uh, can you hear me better now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Good. Okay, Mr. Raff, uh, I note on your application we have, uh, there are no, oh, I'm sorry, did I get your full name and address, please? Uh, I'm Paul Raff. I'm the architect for the property. The address is 703 Bloor Street, West Toronto. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've gone through your file. I note that there are no staff comments or conditions uh, related to your uh, application. Uh, pretty clear what you're asking for in the variances we have before us. Uh, just one thing I wanted to mention when I was up looking at the property, uh, your client has a, a very large fence encroachment into the municipal road allowance. And uh, it's not something we would make a condition, but I think it's something that you need to impress upon your client that he's on someone else's property and he should legalize that situation. I would advise that you notify I will do him. I advise that you notify him in writing to that effect just to protect yourself. Thank you. Uh, now, I just wanted to ask her, is there anything that you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material that we have before us this afternoon? Uh, yes, I'd appreciate a chance to just clarify a few of the variances. Sure. P please, please proceed. Um, could I ask that um, the city staff bring up the plans uh, to the first page? And you'll see the photo on the top with the two-story single-family dwelling. It's a corner property. It's got a one-story portion on its south side. Uh, the front door addresses Old Park and the... Um, um, and we consider it the front of the house for all intents and purposes, but for zoning, it, uh, the other side on the corner on Rydell, if we go to the third page of this PDF, the site plan, uh, I just want to point out is being considered the front yard. And so um, the setback on the left where it says 1.5 meters, that is the allowable setback for a side yard, but in this case, we need a variance. Um, I think it's the uh, first variance for a rear yard setback because this is being deemed the rear yard. So I did want to point out, like many of the variances being asked for today, um, they are actually, uh, we have an existing non-conforming house. Uh, all of these variances exist to some degree, and in most cases we're asking, um, beside that 1.5 metres, you can see our, our new one-storey addition, which is uh, um, only 30 uh, and a half square meters uh, protrudes two meters and seven centimeters beyond the existing one-story garage and it aligns with the sidewall um, of of the existing dwelling um, so that that's what's uh, triggering this so um, with regard to I'll just go through the variances briefly in order with regard to the first one I've already said it's rear yard setback we're asking for an additional 2.717 meters in addition to uh, the existing dwelling what's already there and it's only for the one-story uh, addition portion. Uh, the side yard setback, the 
allowable is 1.5. You can see the existing dwelling at two stories is 1.22. So um, we're asking for 0.28 meters or 28 centimeters because we want to align the addition uh, with the existing house just so it uh, looks good and coherent. The third variance is for the building length, 24.08 meters. Um, it may sound like a lot, but again, it's only 2.17 meters beyond what's existing. And the fourth variance is exactly the same thing. It's the same dimension taken from the same place, but it's for depth instead of length. We're again asking for that extra 2.17 meters. It really affords um, a door, a secondary entrance there. It's, it, we're trying to uh, increase the kind of functionality um, in and around the, the garage um, to accommodate mudroom and storage garbage bins and stuff like that and to keep the the handsome mid-century modern architecture of the house intact uh, the fifth uh, variance is a bit different it's the stairs here on the um, old park road uh, we are trying to get uh, an alignment and respect the uh, original archival um, architectural drawings and the intent of what the entrance was. It was reconstructed, these stairs, in the 1980s uh, in, in what I would say is a clashing style, and it's really a sort of uh, restoration of the style. To, so we're asking for 3.34 meters in width instead of 2 meters, which is what's uh, allowable for a front stair like this. Um, and then the second last variance, number 6, uh, we're asking for 0 0.69, 0 0.693 FSI. Um, if I could ask you uh, to please bring up the supporting material um, uh, from June 2nd. Um, the allowable is 0.6, so we're exceeding it. In red, you can see what we're asking for, 0 0.693. And we have a list of, in this case, nine um, recently approved variances that are in an, anywhere from 0.7 to over 0.9. Um, it's the the FSI of what we're asking for here is below what's in keeping uh, with the scale and character of this neighborhood. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to point out that we are asking for a 1.23 additional encroachment uh, for a barbecue canopy. Um, <laughs> we could return to the site plan for that, but it's uh, it's on the north side of the house. Um, and that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. My, my question is, and concern is variance number one. Your rear yard setback is 1.5. You're almost uh, cutting short the privacy of the others. How do you address that? Um, could we return to seeing the site plan, please? Um, I think you're asking, so the variance here is for, um, whoops, it's moving, this 8.34 meters is the required setback. So we're we're already exceeding that considerably. Uh, it's only one story. It doesn't have windows in the side, and there is a privacy fence here. So I don't believe it, that it um, compromises anyone's privacy. Uh, there's no uh, roof terrace on it. There are no overlook issues. Um, and indeed, we're intending this to be very discreet, so it has very little impact on the neighborhood. Um, and as you'll see on file, the owners have approached uh, all of the neighbors uh, in the vicinity who might be impacted, and that there are several uh, letters of support on file. Um, did I answer your question? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, in looking at this application, I, I really didn't have a problem with it at the beginning, and I think what convinced me as well was not only the numbers of letters of uh, support for this application, but, you know, also just what's been approved um, via SFSI within one kilometer and, and just, you know, showing um, that this is well within reason and meets the intent of the bylaw. And so for that reason, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application. Um, Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Is. Someone to second that? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. That motion carries. Uh, sir, your application has been approved without condition. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Um, could you confirm that it wasn't unanimous? I believe Mr. Khan was actually in support. 
Pardon me? I believe Mr. Khan was actually in support. Oh, I think, oh, I'm, I had, okay. Mr. Khan, were you in support? Yes, sir. I oh, am. I'm sorry. Okay, Mr. Khan, can we record Mr. Khan as in support of that motion on 60 Old Park Road? Okay, thank you. Thank you all very much. We're on uh, item number 29, 30 Chatsworth Drive. I have two people registered to speak. The agent is Glenn Rubinoff. Are you there, Mr. Rubinoff? Yes, good afternoon. It's uh, Glenn Rubinoff. Yes, hi, hi sir. I've got, I uh, went through your file. I note that we've got two reports on, uh, pardon me, one report on file with your application. That's from Transportation Services in a, and their 2nd of June memorandum, they just indicated they had no objections to, the, to your front yard parking and parking stall dimensions. Uh, just wanted to ask, sir, we have one other person registered to speak, so if you could give us a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, yes, the uh, transportation is referring to variances number 6, 7, and 8, which are existing uh, parking that exists on the property, and that's why they have no objection to it, because... There are no changes proposed for the front of the property. This is a rear two-story addition. It's built in line on the uh, on the left-hand side, where the existing setback is at 0.94, and that is uh, where the uh, variance is uh, requested on on the side yard setback. Um, the length of the building is taken from in front of the house. So the variance number um, one, which has a building length of 18.06, is actually showing it longer than it actually is. The actual building length is only 17.55 meters, but it's important to identify that it's taken in front of the house. The other uh, item that I want to point out is variance number four, uh, where the building depth is 20.24 meters. Again, it's taken from the angle. So if you zoom out a little bit from that from that picture that's up there right now, you see the line there, the angled line. That's where building depth is taken. So it's also irregular, and it's not um, it's not indicative of the length. It's more just how it's taken based on the parallel to the property line. Um, I think that uh, the density. We have a map that we've provided to you, which indicates comparables in the area. Um, many of which exceed what we're proposing here for a rear, again, it's a rear two-story addition. There's nothing really unusual about it. Um, the, uh, the platform on the second floor is a partial platform in the back, and it, uh, um, we have letters of support from the adjacent neighbor at 28 and 26, uh, and also in the rear of... Uh, Sheridan number 27 and that's where the balcony kind of goes it's kind of uh, hugged in that corner there um, so I know the concern expressed by the neighbors on the other side wouldn't see that uh, balcony per se um, the uh, the rest of the variances I believe are are pretty straightforward density is is as I said earlier is well within what's 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 been redeveloped in the area. And I feel this is a relatively minor application. And I will note that city planning, uh, when asked if they have a report, they, they replied that they have no, no concerns and will not be writing a report on this. So city planning's decided not to report, uh, write a report. And of course, uh, the transportation has no concerns. Um, so I will leave it at that for now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Carol Brennan. Are you there? Carol Brennan, are you there? Yes, my husband Peter and I are here. Peter's going to speak to our concerns. Okay, if you'd like to give us uh, your address, please. Good afternoon, it's Peter Brennan and my wife Carol, and we own the property of 34 Chatsworth Drive in Toronto. Our property is immediately west of number 30 Chatsworth, the subject of this application. We've lived in our home for nearly 30 years, and we understand the applicant's desire to build a larger house than is currently in place. We are, however, we are concerned with the negative impact 
on light and privacy to our home. The application being considered for a two-story addition requires approval of eight variances, which are required to expand the house by 44%. Notwithstanding the eight variances requested, we will focus on the two variance requests which impact our privacy the most. Number And they're listed on the notice of uh, this meeting. Number one, the permitted maximum building length is 17 meters and the proposed is 18.06. Required number two, the required minimum side yard setback is 1.2 meters and the proposed west side yard setback is 0.94. If approved, the resulting two-story building will have a significant negative impact on our privacy and light to our kitchen, dining area, home office, and patio. Our patio is adjacent to the proposed addition and functions as an extension of our main living space for eight months of the year. The patio will be greatly impacted by a reduction in light and as will the east-facing windows of our kitchen, dining area, and home office. If you refer to the street outline included in the public hearing notice, which was provided by the City of Toronto, you note that the rear wall of the houses on Chatsworth Drive are not aligned. Rather, the houses are staggered with the rear wall of each house tending to be further north as you move from east to west along the street. This amenity has the effect of providing privacy to each rear yard due to the staggered effect of each successive rear wall. If approved as presented, that privacy for our home will be lost, and number 30 Chatsworth will be the only house which violates that pattern on the block. We invited the applicant and her husband to our home on May 28th to discuss our concerns. The applicant flatly refused to consider the impact on us or make any adjustments to her plans. We're asking the committee to require the applicant to comply with two um, variances and re basically refuse these variances. We want them to comply with the permitted maximum building length of 17 meters, and we want them to uh, comply with the required minimum side yard setback of 1.2 meters. Respect, I remind everyone that this is um, completely new construction, so there's no reason these, these requests can't be met. And therefore, we're respectfully asking the committee to, re, to deny the requested variances number one and number two. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay, we'll go back to Mr. Rubinoff. Uh, hello, yes, um, thank you very much. Um, the um, just want to point out that the setback, if you go back to the site plan, um, if I could just illustrate, the existing house is currently at 0 0.94 meters. So the variance is actually for existing and proposed. It's not just for proposed um, and the existing house uh, where, where it exists. The adjacent neighbor at 34 is currently at 2. Four three meters uh, from the property line. So I understand they, they mentioned their concern about uh, shadowing and light, but there's actually a distance of uh, about, about 11 feet between the buildings. So I'm not sure that I can, uh, that, that I, I understand fully what the, how that would be a concern to them. And with regards to the building length, which they brought up, I pointed out earlier that the actual length is taken in front of the house and that it's not actually at 18.06 meters, it's actually 17.55 meters in length, but it, the way in which it's uh, calculated because of the adjacent houses, uh, the, the determination of where the front yard setback is uh, projects in front of where the house is right now. Um, so these two uh, points, uh, I, well, I understand the if there's concern about it, I believe the impacts will not be felt the, the, the way that they feel they, have, they will be. Uh, thank you. Hey, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
I, I feel like I, I am persuaded by the uh, uh, explanations from the uh, applicant with regard to the uh, uh, building depth and side yard setback. Uh, this in addition to the fact that there was no objection to the uh, proposal from city planning. Um, uh, I, I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application uh, without condition. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, Kidd. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? The motion carries unanimously. Uh, Mr. Rubinoff, your application has been approved uh, without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. What's that? Yes. Pardon? Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a break. Uh, we'll come back in five minutes. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Yeah.
Good afternoon, ladies and, gen ladies and gentlemen. The committee is back in session. We're now on item number 30, which is 21 Winston Park Boulevard. I have one person registered to speak, and that is uh, Jonathan Benskowski. Are you there, sir? I'm here, Mr. Chair. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? Jonathan Benskowski, 301 Kewatton Avenue. Thank you, sir. Uh, just going through your file, I note there's a couple of reports here. There's a report from city planning dated the 2nd of June, which has no objections to your application subject to a condition. There's also a report from Transportation Services dated the 1st of June, uh, which recommends your uh, application. I think it was the variance is dealing with the driveway width. They're recommending that they be refused. Um, just wanted to ask, sir, if you've had the opportunity to, re to review those reports. I have, sir, and I, and I will speak to them when uh, provided my time. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's pretty clear what you're asking for in the variances, but uh, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon? Yeah, just to address the transportation issue, we did submit some photos to show that the driveway as it exists uh, at that width has been there since 2007. And you can actually see from the photo submitted, it is marked by the city where the curb cut was to go when the dwelling was submitted. Also on the submitted survey, you'll see that that is an existing driveway width. There is no alteration proposed to the driveway. The proposal is for a new garage located to the side of the existing dwelling, as well as a rear one-story addition and addition above that garage. Now, I, I did have a conversation with the zoning examiner regarding the requirements for landscaping. As, as I was under the impression we did comply, uh, what I was told was because this addition involved the because the side addition was for a new front main wall they actually calculated the existing driveway from the property line to the front wall of the new proposed garage at the side so i, I would say that we actually are in compliance uh, as it would be from the front main wall but the zoning examiner took it from the proposed new garage front wall uh, other than that the side uh, porch that's to be to remain uncovered again has been there since 2015. This is not a new proposal. It is identified on the survey as well as the storage shed is. Uh, and then I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, thank you for clarifying that. I thought that the uh, it was pretty clear that the uh, the driveway that you're requesting is actually existing. Um, does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. I, you know, I accept the explanations provided by the um, agent here today that clarifies for me around the transportation comments and the driveway. So I'll put forward a motion to approve this application. I do believe it meets the four tests and I'll make it subject um, to the June 2nd uh, report in that the proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing submitted to the committee and the existing um, side porch remains uh, open and unenclosed. Okay, thank you, Ms. Um, Sankar. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Kidd seconds, all those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been uni you. unanimously approved subject to city planning conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Now on item number 31, 413 Drury Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That's uh, Nadim Irfan, I-R-F-A-N. Are you there, sir? Yes, Mr. S uh, Ms. Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Uh, my name is Nadim Irfan, NIA Architects, uh, 10 Midland Business Court, Suite 710 Scarborough, Ontario, and 1B 3C6. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, just going through your file here, I note that there's a recommended condition from Urban Forestry, and there's a report from Transportation Services dated the 1st of June, and they have no objections to the driveway design or width. Uh, 
pretty clear what you're asking for and the variances that are before us, sir. I just wanted to ask, is there anything you'd like to uh, tell the committee that isn't contained in the material that we have before us this afternoon? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, this was uh, approved in 2020 with a little larger footprint and with the nine variances. So my client, he acquired this property last year and he wanted to make amendments. And we, when we submit uh, uh, the building permit uh, revisions, they, they were told that because the previous decision was tied to the plans and we have to go back to the committee. And that's why we are here before. Uh, this is a much gentler uh, proposal than uh, what was approved in the past. Uh, but we kept the building footprint a little bit smaller than what they asked and uh, perhaps uh, less number of variances, only four. It was uh, last, last uh, 2020, it was approved with nine variances. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, there is no staff recommendation for this application. And the transportation services, okay, variance number four. Uh, and I find that these are minor variances. I move this application be approved with forestry conditions. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Uh, someone to uh, second that motion? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor, that motion carries. Uh, sir, your application has been uh, unanimously approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you, sir. Right, thank you. Now on item number 32, 615 Briar Hill Avenue. The agent is Brian, uh, Brian, Michael Flynn. Mr. Flynn, are you there? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, we have, uh, I'm looking at your file, the only recommended condition we have here is from Urban Forestry. Uh, you have one, uh, you have one variance before us. It's for, uh, for floor space and it's, it's for a floor space index. It's pretty clear what you're asking for, sir. I just wanted to ask, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon? Well, the only thing that's changed is that the owner of the property next door at 613, who had a letter of concern into the committee, has now said they don't object, they will not attend the hearing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and that they're happy with the revisions to the drawings. Okay, thank you. Does so the that's the only new thing. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? <clears throat> there being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think this is a, a modest proposal, and uh, I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application uh, subject to forestry condition. Thank you. Someone to second that? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. That motion carries. Uh, Mr. Flynn, your application has been approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members. Thank you, sir. Item number 33, 101 Heathcote Avenue. I have one person registered to speak, and that is Kristen Weldon. Are you there? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Can I get your full name and address, please? Ms. Weldon, are you there? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Can I get your full name and address, please? It's Kristen Weldon. And the address, 101 Heathcote Avenue, North York. Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, I don't know if you had the opportunity to, re there's a report on file with your application from city planning dated the 2nd of June. And they're recommending that you're- Yes, I-, I You're right, they're recommending your application be refused. Have you had the opportunity to read that report? I have. Okay, if you'd like to, uh, Give us a brief presentation on, uh, I presume you'd like to move forward, so if you could give us a presentation on what you see as the merits of your application, especially in light of the comments from city planning. Yes. Okay. So um, this has been an ongoing project 
Oh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. This has been an ongoing project from uh, last year, and we had quite a few uh, minor variances that we um, had um, from last year. So I was hoping in all the changes that we did make, um, as opposed to the, the softscaping on the property and the drainage and everything, um, that we would be considered for approval for this uh, gazebo. I did submit photos um, the first time in the hearing I don't know if you guys can access them. Yeah, so there's the gazebo and behind it is uh, the street side of the property because the property is on a corner. And um, there's another photo with a side view. So you can see it's more of like a sheltered area. And then um, the plan was the, the customer wanted privacy along that side because her, her property is elevated and there's like a, it's a iron fence. Um, instead of building a massive fence, like they thought, oh, put in a, a gazebo. Um, and if you look at the history of, of what happened, we had another contractor involved who was in charge of the permits. He didn't get them. I said, it's completely our fault for not checking with this contractor um, about those permits. So everything got stopped. Anyways, long story short, we went into, got into compliance with every other violation we had. And we're hoping because this gazebo was kind of stopped mid build and we've already lost quite a bit of money doing all the landscape variations um, and also the homeowner. Um, it's our fault, but we didn't realize there were so many bylaws in Toronto. We don't usually do much work in Toronto. Um, but that being said, it's our fault that we didn't look into this first before um, doing all this. So we have, it's already kind of half done. It's been stopped. Um, we're hoping that, you know, with consideration of the committee that, that we would be approved for this structure. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any uh, questions of the speaker? Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to bring to the notice of this lady that 36.95% lot coverage is quite high as allowable 30%. They were already given 31.90 in 2019. Now, if you accumulate both of these, it is 19% more than they are asking. So my question is, is it already built? Yes. It, it was already built and this was, be, we were partnered with another contractor who assured us they got all the permits and that we could start. Um, I, I brought this up in the last meeting, but I also said it's our fault because we should have asked for the permits so that we knew we could go forth. Since then, the other contractor has been fired, obviously, um, and we've had to finish that job. And also, if you look at the history we also had to make major revisions to the landscaping we had completed because we were unaware of these bylaws. We were also unaware that the original builder had <laughs> left the permit open. Um, there was a lot of things that we were not prepared for in, in this job. We were just trying to uh, give the customer what she requested. <laughs> Madam, if I, could, um, if I could ask, just to follow up on Mr. Khan's question, you're, the, the maximum lot coverage permitted is 30%. You're going for 36.95%, which is 6.95% over the bylaw. But the, the location of this gazebo in the rear yard, actually, it, it butts up against the Portsmouth uh, right-of-way. Is that correct? So it's really not it doesn't really block anybody's view. Uh, certainly not obstructing no, any um, view of anything from the, from the rear of the property. Say your your property behind, for the property behind you. No, not. Uh, the main purpose the customer wanted, like she's got kids, so she just wanted privacy along that side, and a nice area to just kind of hang out and watch her kids swim, and that's the purpose of the gazebo. And if you see in the photo, it's quite open. It's not an enclosed structure or anything like that. And it is along 
the roadway. So it's not, you know, impeding anyone's house or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? Ms. Sanker? Well, I do want to point out one comment as opposed to a question because I think uh, she's answered quite a bit already and I, I feel the situation is unfortunate, but we do have a letter of objection. So even though we think it's tucked away at the back, we've got someone here who wrote in, took the time to write in and say, look, this is not minor and I'm objecting to it. So that letter is by Anina L. That's on file. So um, I don't think that could be ignored is what I'm saying. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have um, any... Can I just... Oh, I'm sorry. Madam, if you'd like to respond. Could, can I make one? <laughs> yeah, I would. I would if, if I could. Okay, thank you. Um, but prior to this, sorry, prior to this, we did um, have this in our first committee of adjustment meeting, and we did have two people also respond, but they didn't state any into the gazebo it was just the fact that we um didn't follow the protocol and i had said like i'm very sorry as in my cover letter i explained why um and this new objection letter just i'm not sure where this person lives or or what neighbor it is and i do totally understand how you allow one thing to go then everybody's going to want to do it um it's just a situation we're hoping you'd have a little grace with us towards. And I did try with our um, designer to see if we could actually make it smaller um, because I did speak with city planning way back and she did state that they would allow up to 35%. And if there was any way I could make adjustments, but because everything was cemented in and I'd have to rip it all apart. So it's kind of like hoping we'd have a little leeway. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? Can I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? You know, these applications are really uh, difficult for us to decide because when you look at it on paper, it's not something that you would want to say, I'm going to go ahead and approve, especially when there is objections on file. But what makes it worse is that you begin and then plead innocence, you know, that I've not, you know, I, I don't know anything about it. I didn't get the permits on time, all of these things. To, to somebody who has to make a decision, it's like you're accountable for what you have to do with this property. That being said, um, you know, there's a certain amount of uh, judgment that we should have as members as well. And hearing the story of, you know, understanding that this, you know, could have been an honest mistake, that it's a family with kids, that it does seem to be by the, by the photo tucked away at the back and to be in normal proportions for that area and, and, and the size of the property. I'm willing to, for this uh, you know, particular application, uh, I'd like to give the benefit of the doubt. And so I'll put forward a motion then to approve this application um, uh, you know, as is. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. That motion carries. Madam, your application has been approved without condition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Item number 34, 245 Manor Road East. I have uh, one person registered to speak. That is Jim Wallace. Are you there? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Certainly. My name is Jim Wallace of uh, Arc House Architects, Inc., located at 1358 uh, Huron, Ontario Street in Mississauga, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. It's uh, pretty clear what you're asking for in the variances we have before us. Uh, I, I would like you to make a uh, answer a question for me as that is I've, I've looked at your application. I noticed that you're asking for a, 
floor space index that's nearly twice the, what's allowed under the uh, bylaw. If you could give us a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal as well as the justification for that F floor space index. Yes, most certainly, Mr. Chairman. So this application was brought to the committee initially on the 8th of March of 2022, uh, and planning staff had requested a deferral of the application to meet some uh, some comments that they had, some concerns with the design that they had as it related to the height of the building uh, and the length of the building. Um, th the original uh, application um, had we agreed to the deferral and we worked with planning staff to address their concerns specifically. Now, as for your concerns regarding FSI, this is a function of the uh, the, 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 the height of the entrance door above established grade. When a main floor is located more than 1.2 meters above established grade, the basement is considered the main floor or the ground floor. So in this instance, all three floor levels are counted to FSI in this particular application. That dramatically skews the numbers as a result of uh, the basement, the lowest level of the house counting to the floor space index. Um, planning staff didn't seem to have too much of a concern about that, understanding that that's, that's the nature of the interpretation of the bylaw. Their concern was the height. And so we lowered our eave height and our top of roof height to a number that uh, planning staff was more comfortable with and uh, as a result, they did not submit an amended planning report um, uh, as a result of this, of, of, of the deferral. Um, I know that the owners had, uh, were, were very agreeable to addressing the concerns of planning and had spoken with their neighbors. I know there is one letter on file in regards to an objection about the depth of the building, we did, as a result of the initial application, we did reduce the depth of the building to something that was that planning felt was more appropriate with the established uh, con constructed new, new homes in the area. Um, and uh, they were agreeable to those to those factors. Um, one of the other reasons why we did not excavate further down in these in this particular style of home is there would be a significant amount of excavation and city of toronto has become very um, has taken a very proactive approach about protection of neighboring properties as it relates to shoring due to excavation as a result we are trying to limit the amount of excavation that will occur between existing homes um, where their foundations are likely not as deep as a new built house so when we take into consideration these things, we have to factor in a number of things. And unfortunately, the zoning bylaw is not working to our advantage in this instance. So uh, despite the uh, FSI being a lot greater than what the bylaw allows, there are good reasons as to why we had come to this determination. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate that uh, explanation. Uh, do, do you know just uh, if you didn't have to include those below grade areas for in the calculation of F FSI, what would the floor space index be? I can give you that uh, that that number, Mr. Chairman. If you just give me a second, so the ground floor area plus the second floor air area is roughly two hundred and thirty square meters. If you were to divide that by the area of the lot, you achieved a number of 0 0.795 FSI. Oh, terrific. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Does the committee have any uh, questions of the speaker? There being none, uh, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, having listened to the explanation of the agent and uh, uh, given the fact that uh, uh, city planning uh, 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 has no objections, hasn't expressed any objections to the proposal, I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application 
uh, without condition. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second that motion? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. That motion carries. Uh, sir, your application has been approved without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and the committee. Thank you. Uh, we're on to item number 35, 437 Fairlawn Avenue. I have three people registered to speak. Uh, the agent is Jim Pfeffer. Are you there, sir? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Uh, I just wanted to say I've gone through your file. I note there are two staff reports here uh, listed. We have a recommended condition from urban forestry, and there's also a report from city planning that has uh, no objections to your application subject to a condition. Uh, I just wanted to ask, sir, if you've had the opportunity to review those reports. Yes, I have, and we're happy with both of them. Okay, thank you, sir. If you'd like to give us a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal, sir. Yeah, um, if the uh, staff member could pull up our presentation material. Um, so this was here back in January, so I'm happy to be here with this revised proposal. And with this revised proposal, we've reduced the height of the house by half a meter. We've reduced the length. We've reduced the depth by 76 centimeters. We've reduced the lot coverage. There was a deck in the rear that was very close to a neighbor's fence. We pulled that back to be in line with the side of the house. Uh, and we've agreed with one neighbor to locate the air conditioning in its present location. And as well, on the neighbor to the west, uh, with him, we've agreed to have a translucent privacy screen on the west side of the second floor balcony. So if the Committee of Adjustment wants to make that a condition of uh, decision, we'd be happy to do that. In our prior uh, hearing, staff had some concerns. Those concerns, as you know, have been resolved. As well, we are now here with nine letters of support from uh, neighbors in the immediate context, including the neighbor immediately behind, the neighbor to the west, and the immediate neighbor immediately across the street. If you take a look at our first page, the front elevation, you can see that this is a three-story building. That's one of our variances. Um, but you can see the third story is entirely an attic story. It's truly a two and a half story building in that that third story is half of the area of the second floor. It only presents in the front with these two small dormers and one small dormer to the rear, which you'll see in the next page. On that next page, you'll see that dormer. It's well set back from the back wall of the house. It's also set in at the side. There's a small balcony that is basically nestled right inside of that dormer. Having that balcony is a code requirement, but being so well set back from each side, you can see even from this view that there's no real view down into the neighboring yards from that small code required balcony. You'd only be able to see out from there. Here on the bottom left, this is the rendering from our January hearing. That barbecue platform has been moved in to, the, to align with the side of the house. On the next page, you'll see our site plan. You'll see the footprint of our building actually aligns very nicely in the front and in the back with our neighboring buildings. Our second floor of the house is basically in line with that projecting bay window in the house in the upper part uh, to the east. And we've, if you zoom in a little bit to the back, you'll see we've drawn a red line. And that red line is the as of right footprint for a 17 meter length house built at 19 meters in depth. You can see there's very little of the house beyond that, only a sliver on the second floor, a little bit more on the ground floor where it doesn't really have any impact. These are all south facing yards. There's very little shadow. I can show you more about that later. And the lot itself, is 163 feet deep. The owners knew this is the kind of house they wanted to build, and that's why they selected this very deep lot. On the next page, you can actually see this lot in context with all the other lots here. You can see these extraordinarily deep lots. All of those were kind of in the middle on the right there. You can see we're aligning with a pattern of open space in the street wall in the front. In the back, we're also going to be aligned with the typical sort of rear yard condition. All of those yards face south, so very little shadowing, 
what we're doing in the rear yard where we have no landscaping variances, very much in keeping with the development of yards. On the next page, you'll see this issue of height. So there's our, our proposed house in the center. That's a house that is the house on the immediate left. It was designed by our office. We designed this house to have the same peak of roof height as that house, and that's exactly what we've got. The same on the house to the right. That house needed to go to committee for a 29 centimeter main wall height variance. We don't need that, so our main wall is lower than that house. Our peak of roof is exactly the same. On the next page, we took a really deep dive onto the heights on this block. I won't go into this now. We surveyed every house in this block. 24 of these houses are that form, recessed garage, two full stories above, pitched roof above. We're lower than nine of those types of houses, our main wall lower than six. So we're comfortably within the massing of that prevalent house Sir, can form. Can you summarize, on this please? Block. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I'm happy to hear the, uh, here, here, whoever else is here. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on, this, on the list. I have a Maureen Shade. Are you there? Maureen Shade, are you there? Yes, I am with my husband, Neil Silver, as well. Yes, can I get your... Uh, Full name and address, please. My husband will be speaking. It's Neil Silver, um, 451 Fairlawn Avenue. Okay, thank you, sir. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair and committee members, thank you for your time. Um, privacy is, is, is our major issue, which brings us to the proposed third floor deck. Um, Currently on, on the view, you can see, we've been in consultation with the architect, Mr. Pfeffer, and he provided a view from the existing second story deck, um, which is actually would be acceptable to us. Unfortunately, the uh, proposed third floor balcony deck is about four feet higher, um, as told to us by Mr. Pfeffer, and it's also been moved from the far side of the house to the side of the house closer to us. Um, so the view there is, um, I, I don't know if they can bring up the view. There's a picture we sent in from our backyard. Is that possible? Yeah. So that's from, that's from our backyard, you know, going towards the, uh, the proposed house. As you can see from that view, the tree that was on uh, Mr. Pfeffer's drawing is not in existence blocking the view. Um, so we understand that uh, a balcony is necessary to meet code. <laughs> uh, Mr. Pfeffer had suggested a side facing balcony, but later on, uh, and, and that would have been a great idea, but later on he indicated that um, because of the size, it would functionally, it would, it would impact the ability to functionally lay out the attic story spaces. Not that it cannot be done or meet code. Um, if this is not possible, we would request that the balcony in the back be as small as possible. Um, currently, I think the uh, balcony proposed is four square meters, uh, eight by eight inches by five inches. And it's our understanding that it can be as small as three feet by three feet. Um, so that would be our request um, with a privacy screening to try and block out as much as possible. Um, we also don't know if it's reasonable to request to have a letter signed indicating that no future date, this balcony area could be changed or modified to extend to a larger size and possibly even put a penalty clause if it was not done. We thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Lev... Reitberg, R-O-I-T-B-E-R-G. Lev Reitberg, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yes, can, can, I get you hear full, me? can I get your full name and address, please? Yeah, 443 Fairlawn Avenue. 
the immediate neighbor to the west from the proposed house. Okay, thank you, sir. If you and can uh, your, you can give us your thoughts on this application. Thank you. Hello, sir. Are you there? I sound like my uh, neighbor. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can Hello? hear you. Can I get Can I get your full name and address? Yeah. Yeah. Lev Reutberg, 443 Fairlawn Avenue. Okay. Thank you, sir. Give us. Let's Let's hear your thoughts. So next. Hello, sir. But it's not, not also in Rusev. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have it's bad drug. Uh, sir, can I can you give yeah, us your you thoughts know, on it's the better application? Not uh, sorry, uh, you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Regarding the application, I have the same concern like uh, Mr. Silver explained for a, a, a balcony, this big balcony, uh, it will uh, be intrusive to my privacy. And another con my, uh, concern is that the length of the house is a seven length of the house, 17 meters. And, um, they're asking for almost five meters longer, which is very long, it's about five meters will create a wall it's like you know if it was uh, if it was anybody else even you you cannot be like uh, have this it's too long they want I'm not against they want bigger home not a problem they want zero three something it's okay but uh, I don't want this wall. It's really, it's wall next to, I have some, a little balcony outside of my house on the main floor. And I'll have this uh, full wall like blocking all this side and blocking the, I, and it's also enclosed to the privacy. Those guys, the original, they reduced very little uh, the size of the, like the length of the house, very little, like 0. Uh, something, I think it was, 2196 originally they reduced it to 2165 uh, which is really not unique. Uh, this really bothers me because it will block sunlight it's like a full wall next to my uh, little space i have to sit outside and uh, that this is my concern and that's why i want to ask you uh, how to and i explained this to the architect i wrote him We've been back and forth with the letters, and I explained that this is my concern, and uh, basically we didn't come to any solution. And that's why I want you to decide on this. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank thank you. you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go back to uh, the agent. Mr. Pfeffer, are you there? I am here. Yes, you've, so, heard the, you've heard the comments from the previous speaker, sir, if you'd like to re reply. Yeah, if you could pull up the site plan, that's on page three of our presentation booklet uh, first. So we did make a few accommodations to Mr. Rotenberg in terms of moving the air conditioner, uh, pulling in that deck, zooming in on that back corner next to his house, which is the upper house. You can see we've got that red line which is the as of right depth of a house. So our, the corner of our house there is inside of that red line. What's beyond it is that single story extension and that small little thing. So we're not coming back an extraordinary amount. And you can see as well, you know, his bay window. When he went to the Committee of Adjustment, he was asking for a depth variance of 19.83 meters, I believe, to build that house. And if you can flip a few more pages to page seven, addressing his concerns, we have prepared a shadow study. So the shadow study, if you just get to page seven there, yeah. So that's the morning sun, nine o'clock on March 21st. And you can see the shadow 
towards his house is basically the shadow of the fence. And that's because our, our attic story, our half story up above, you can see in that diagram, if you just zoom in on it, that's really well set back from that permitted depth. So the shadow that you're, that's coming across his property, that's the shadow of the fence. And then later on in the day, there's nothing, fortunately, because these are south facing yards. Going on to the next page, if you could, please. You'll see this is our third floor. You can see it's so much smaller than the footprint of the second floor. That's that very small deck set in five foot nine from his side of the property, 11 feet from the back. Two more pages along on page 10. This is a view that we took from essentially what would be his backyard. And you can see up on that third floor, you can't really, you can't even see the door that connects to that balcony. And that balcony is a really of a very minimal length. We will make it as small as the building code will allow. You can see he himself has that projecting bay window at the second floor. And you can see, and that bay window will have just as much overlook into our proposed yard as anything in our proposed house will. You know, you look at our back here, that window is set back, his bay is at the same level, third floor balcony, very well set back, no overlook. On the next page, if you would, this is the view um, that Mr. Silver was speaking of. So this is the view from the existing, completely as of right, second floor balcony. So there is some view into Mr. Rotenberg's yard. That type of view into someone's yard is contemplated by the bylaw. It's permitted. You find it from this as of right balcony. The balcony we're proposing is actually set well inside of this. Further beyond that, you can see from this existing balcony, there's no view whatsoever into Maureen's yard or Mr. Silver's yard two doors down. You can't see into that yard at all. The new balcony is four feet further up, but it's also it's further towards the street. Finally, I guess if you could just bring in that photo that was being shown by Mr. Silver from his yard. If you take a look at that photo. Um, yeah, if you just zoom in on that photo. You can see, so there's that projecting bay window of Mr. Rotenberg's, and you can see from that window, you would be able to look into Mr. Silver's backyard. But if you take took a look at our third floor plan or our site plan, you could see our balcony is well forward of that, well towards the street. So imagine a view from that yard, precisely the view that that photograph was taken from, that bay window, that house is gonna be, yeah, our balcony, you know, it's going to be behind that sidewall of Mr. Rodenberg's house. If you take a look at our third floor plan, I guess, you know, here you can see the footprint of the house. Our third floor plan is a few pages back. You can see how well set in our third floor balcony is. No, the third floor, it's a couple sheets down. Uh, one more, one more. Yeah, you can see, no, one up. One, one, one up. Yeah, right there. You can see how set in the footprint of that house, our house, that balcony is. So if you're imagining it on the site plan, Mr. Rotenberg's house, you know, pretty much pretty similar to the real depth of our house, you know, back at those two close together grid lines. So his house is going to be blocking the view from this balcony from uh, Mr. Silver's backyard. And I, I'm quite confident. And screening, okay, he mentioned sir. some kind Can of you screening. Thank you. We'll provide that if required. Okay, thank you. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kahn? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Although staff has recommended differently to what I am thinking to make a motion, I find variance number one, the building height exceeding as well as variance number 14, building height exceeding. And variance number two, three stories when two maximum is allowed, 
Radius 3 building length exceed 25% more than allowable. And variance number four, building depth exceeds the gain. Building uh, variance number six, lot coverage exceeds. Variance number seven, a, a rear two platform when one is allowed. And the privacy question is in question again. And one speaker was talking about privacy. So I find all these are not minor variances. Therefore, I move that this, and they do not comply with the zoning bylaws. I move that this application be refused. Thank you, Mr. Khan. We have a motion from Mr. Khan to refuse the application. Can I get someone to second that motion? That motion does not carry. Can I get another motion, please? Ms. Sankar? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, you know, um, I realize that this um, application has gone through several iterations, and I think each time that it has come back, there's been a lot more consideration. And although there are objections on file and they've actually presented their cases today, I, I find that there's compelling evidence that the um, the applicant or the agent has gone out of their way to try to um, have those types of considerations in in this this application at this current stage. And so I think that um, that being said, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to put forward a motion to um, approve this application. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I, I'm, I'm wondering, I, I can't recall if there were actual changes that were made um, because I, I, I did not record those on here, but I'm, I'm looking at the staff report. Mr. Chair, if, uh, yeah. if you're able to share that with me. Yes, Ms. Sankar, the, uh, the only, uh, I guess the, the applicant indicated they made changes in consultation with planning and the only, uh, like I said, the only conditions on this application are urban forestry and city planning, which had no objections with the condition that uh, the building length and depth be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing attached to their report. Those are right, the and that's staff. the only one that I'm seeing here. Okay, so I just wanted to be clear on that and make sure that that is what I'm seeing here. So I, I will put forward the motion to approve this application, knowing that he's set on file that he will deal with the privacy issues um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis with the neighbor, et cetera. And I'll make it subject to, um, you know, the planning conditions around the side exterior wall heights be developed in accordance with the east and west side elevation drawings, as well as subject to, um, to forestry. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Uh, will you second that, Mr. Kidd? Oh, it, the staff conditions were actually about length and depth, no, I think. I'm sorry. No. Sorry, it was length and depth. I'm yeah. sorry, sir, we're, we're, in, sorry, we're yeah. making Reading. a motion. Uh, Mr. Kidd, you second yeah, that? Yes, it was length and depth, sorry, developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing, sorry. Yep, thank you. Yes. Okay, Mr. Kidd seconds that motion. Uh, so that motion carries. Uh, sir, your application's been approved, subject to urban forestry conditions and city planning conditions. Thank you very much. Have a thank great you. afternoon. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'm, opposed, I'm opposing this one. Yes, I had you down there as dissenting. I'm sorry, Mr. Khan. Yes, I think I had you down as dissenting. Thank you. Oh, did I say? Oh, okay. Mr. Khan, put, put Mr. Khan down as dissenting. Yes. Item number 36, 101 Broadleaf Road. I have one person registered to speak. That's Amadi Ajvand, A-J-V-A-N-D. Are you there? Hello? Yes, hello. Can I get your full name and address, please? Hi, my name is Nushin Mozafari from Hyphen Studio, representing the, this case. Okay, thank you, ma'am. My first name I've, is uh... Nushin, and I... Okay, thank you, madam. Mm -hmm. I have uh, your report here, a uh, number of reports with respect to your, uh, to your application from city staff. There's one from Urban Forestry, a recommended condition. There's a report from Transportation Services dated the 1st of June. They had uh, no objections to your driveway design and location. There's also a report from City Planning dated the 2nd of June, which recommends a number of modifications to your 
uh, application and if those modifications are made, that it be made subject to a condition. And I wanted to ask, Madam, have you had the opportunity to uh, review these reports? Yes, and uh, I should make those changes to the application. Okay, Madam, so, can I ask you before, you, uh, before we start, can you read into the record what those changes are? Yes, variance number three okay. is removed. Just a second. Variance number three? Eliminated. Oh, that's deleted, okay, variance number three is deleted. Variance number seven okay. is improved to 9.6. Okay, so I just let, let me just go down here. Variance number seven reads, the proposed height of the side exterior main walls facing a side lot line is 9.96 .9 meters, and you're proposing to reduce it to 9.6 meters? Yes. Okay. 9.60. Next one. Uh, variance number 11. Variance number 11. Okay. Reduced to 9.47. Oh, hang on just a second. Uh, the building height, hang on, variance number 11. The bill, oh, I'm sorry, building height under the old North York bylaw. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're proposing to reduce that from 9.57 meters to 9.47 meters. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Are there any other changes? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for making those changes. Are there, uh, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon? Uh, yes, uh, if I uh, have a chance, I want to uh, have a brief uh, presentation. Uh, this application has been before committee uh, on uh, March 8, and uh, we uh, deferred the case to uh, have a chance to uh, improve the application and get the uh, planning support and also the neighboring uh, uh, supportive uh, supports. Uh, generally, variance number one and nine are about the deck projection. Uh, the deck is not that big, but uh, its projection into the rear setback is 3.05 instead of 2.5. Variance number two is the width of stairs at the front. As you see, uh, the front stairs are uh, like some uh, floating platforms on top of each other, and their width is more than two meter. Number four and five is for the three car garage. Uh, for this uh, purpose, we have the driveway width uh, variance and also the vehicular entrance through the main wall. Uh, number six is for the coverage, which is uh, uh, pretty much uh, aligned with the character of the neighborhood and other approved cases in the area. Variance number seven for the wall height. If you look at the uh, site elevations uh, that the planning uh, is uh, suggesting to be tied to the application, uh, only 10% of the best wall uh, has uh, 9.6 meter of height and the rest complies with the 7.5 meter uh, allowed wall height. And also on the east side, only the bay window uh, does not comply with the allowed wall height and uh, its top is nine meter, even less than 9.6 meter on the other side. Variance number eight is front setback. We are asking for 8.19 instead of 8.91. Uh, and uh, as you see, the depth of the uh, lot is very shallow, and uh, we uh, have located this building uh, in a way that we don't have the rear setback variance. The length of the building is much less than the allowed length, and this couple feet of front setback variance uh, doesn't change uh, much uh, 
in the street view. Uh, the, our building, our proposed building is still behind uh, our neighbor uh, on the west side. And uh, the uh, front setback is uh, a, a big uh, front yard. Uh, the variance for the west side setback is only for the uh, front half, and the rest has much more than uh, required setback. Uh, it's uh, the distance from the side property line is 12 feet, and this is only for the front portion to accommodate the uh, bedrooms on the second floor. And uh, the height on the old bylaw uh, is also improved to 9.5. Four seven, uh, which is a common variance in uh, this uh, zoning designation. As you see, in compare with the previous application uh, on uh, March 8, uh, all the variances for the platform, balcony, canopy, encroaching to the front yard are eliminated. Landscaping and soft landscaping variances are eliminated. Rear setback and uh, side setback on the east are eliminated, and also variances for coverage, front setback, wall height, and uh, total height under old bylaw has been improved. Uh, so uh, we have worked uh, really hard with the planning uh, to uh, satisfy all of their concerns, and uh, we have come back with our best uh, solution and uh, improved case seeking your uh, approval today. Okay, thank you. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, uh, if I could get a motion on this revised application, please. I'll just go through the changes one more time. Variance number three regarding the front yard landscaping has been deleted. Uh, variance number seven regarding the exterior main wall height has been reduced from the proposal at 9.96 meters to, nine, to uh, 9.6 9 meters. And variance number 11 regarding the building height under the, uh, has been reduced from 9.57 meters to 9.47 meters. So if I could get a motion on this revised application, please. Mr. Kahn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you have already gone through the uh, modifications of the variances from 1 to 11, so I'm not going to repeat. But I'm taking the staff recommendations and I'm reading, they have recommended the site exterior main wall height be developed substantially in accordance with the east and west side elevation drawings. Attachment 1 and 2 to this report. So I move this, um, make a motion that this application be approved plus forestry conditions. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Someone to second Mr. Khan's motion. Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Madam, your, app, your revised application has been approved subject to urban forestry and city planning conditions. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. We're now on item number 37, 353 Rainy Avenue. I have one person registered to speak, and that is Enrique Valencia, are you there? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, my name is Enrique Valencia of Valencia Enterprises, Inc., and I'm the agent for 353 Rene. Okay, thank you, sir. I noticed uh, that there's one report on file from city planning dated the 30th of May, uh, which had no objections to your application provide uh, subject to a condition. Uh, you have two variances before us. Uh, it's pretty clear what you're asking for. They're related to the rear deck and a cabana. Uh, pretty clear what you're asking for. I'll just ask the committee if it has uh, before that. Is there anything you'd like to tell, uh, tell the committee uh, with regards to this application that isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon? Um, well, I actually wanted to kind of speak about it and address the letters of objection that we sure. received. Yes, you can go ahead. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So 
for the sake of time, I'll address the family, my clients, as Brian Lopez. He's uh, the oldest son and the one who's been dealing with all the correspondence and headaches, not only with the neighbors, but the lawyers and the insurance. Uh, I just have to give some context to this application. Uh, my client bought this house without knowing that there was an open permit. Uh, we already dealt with uh, lawyers, the CBO, and insurance companies. And um, a lot of the letter of objections that we have, if, you, if you've if you noticed who they're from, uh, four of them are from the two adjacent neighbors. So two and two. And uh, the my previous date that we had, uh, we, that we came here and we got deferred, uh, the neighbor in, in the back uh, also called in to object. But since then we've, uh, spoken to two out, two out of the three families and uh, we actually got one letter of support from the rear neighbor and uh, we have a civil agreement with 355 the owner of 355 um, that if during, throughout the course of construction if anything is broken or if anything uh, any dirt or anything like that happens to fall on his property then the Lopez family will will more than happily compensate them um, like I said, so the main reason why they, they're objecting today is because of the hell that they went through with the original builder of the property. And um, my clients more or less had to deal with the same thing and in a way received a lot of backlash uh, just because he wanted to start up a new deck. Um, thankfully, this application is only dealing with two variances and which we do believe it's, it's minor. Uh, solely for the fact that the bylaws actually allow uh, for almost a hidden percentage to be excluded from the total lot coverage. Unfortunately, because of the way that we were forced to extend the deck, we don't apply to it. So um, realistically, the I would say that the lot coverage is actually inflated in a way because I can go for the same amount of coverage of the cabana deck and porch and get it with a with an even lower um coverage rate but um unfortunately unfortunately because of the way that the walkout was built we had to push out to the end of the walkout as i can't have a column in the middle of the stairs and there's a double door at the bottom uh in regards to the other variants it actually has to do with the height of the cabana which that platform was already there um and we had to legalize it uh, because the permit was open and that's not what was on the original plans. Uh, you'll see that in the foundation plan, that one, the A201, sorry, the A200, if you just keep going up, the footings were actually, the footings are actually more or less brand new and reinforced because the original builder didn't build it correctly. And um, well, with these, condi with these conditions in play, um, like I said, the, the lock coverage is actually inflated. It's more about 3% of what would be allowed. And I think even community planning and, uh, the staff report that we received from planning, uh, I think they realized it as well, that they don't really have any objection. And thanks to that staff report, we had a lot more confidence going into this application. Um, apart from that, I do sympathize with all the <laughs> adjacent neighbors. Uh, they were all put in a situation that, I mean, if any one of us was getting stuck or thrown onto our our side facade, how do you really deal with it? Not a lot of people know how. They would have to cover the expense themselves. And that's basically what happened in this situation. And it's probably not fair for uh, Brian and his family to be dealing with that, that kind of backlash. Um, apart from that, um, yeah, we've spoken to two out of the three families. And, um, oh, Brian and his family do intend on staying in this house. So we are trying to build up the relationships with the neighbors. And uh, that's it. That's, uh, that's more or less all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. My question to Mr. Valencia is, uh, my concern is your cabana size is 36 by 12 and nine nine feet nine inches high and on the backyard you're particularly covering the whole thing and the view from 
the person who is on the backyard uh, is completely, uh, I mean, devoid of uh, seeing a, a nice view. So my concern is the height as well as the size of the cabana itself. And this is not the normal thing uh, to do uh, to keep a good relationship. So I'm happy to respond, uh, Mr. Khan. Um, there is a, it, the property does grade down towards the fence line. So we're actually not as high as, as it may seem. And we spoke with the homeowner uh, directly to the rear. And she's actually the one who offered a letter of support. Um, but yeah, no, the, the difference in, in grading, which there will be a grading plan once we go into the building permit phase, um, it, it, you'll see that it would address that. But there's no variance for the cabana at the moment, sir. Okay, uh, thank you. Does the uh, committee have any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, having listened to the uh, explanations from the uh, applicant and uh, given the fact that the uh, <coughs> city planning staff uh, uh, basically supports this application uh, with a condition, uh, I'd like to put forward a motion to uh, uh, accept this application subject to the planning staff uh, condi uh, condition that the uh, um, uh, the property be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment and attached as attachment one to the planning staff report dated uh, May 30th, uh, 2022. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second Mr. Kidd's motion? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved subject to uh, city planning conditions. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That ends uh, today's session. Thank you very much. If I could get a motion to terminate the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Thank you very much. Nadini, Paul, good to see you again. We'll talk soon. Bye now. Have a great evening. Thank you. Have bye -bye. a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.